Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. Sorry I'm talking and starting late. A few announcements. Oh, and hello to those who are watching us from home or will be watching us later. Um, as you can guess, Roberta has been working very hard over the summer on trying to come up with a faith formation program that will work for our young people, especially because some of our young people haven't been vaccinated. And as you can imagine, the suggestions in June have changed in July and changed in August and have just changed in September. So I want you to give her a round of applause for all the work she's been doing. And she's here today to help anyone who wants to register their children. I don't see too many people who that it pertains to, but anyway. Um, and, and we continue to support our faith formation programs with our prayer. It'll, it'll begin in, the sessions will begin in mid-October, so we'll check with Anne Marie to see if there's children here who would like to have a session. And if you have any interest in helping, just see Roberta, because we can always use an extra hand. So thank you, Roberta. Thanks again. The diocesan day of prayer that I spoke about last week, um, I put a couple registration uh, forms on the bulletin board, so you could just take one to take home. That's you got to register by Wednesday. Um, also in the back, there's a box with gray sheets in it. Those are parish council nominations. We were looking for three people, but now we're looking for four because uh, somebody decided they can't work with me any longer. <laughs> and uh, that could be true. I didn't ask him why he wanted to leave. And uh, so please, over the next few weeks, to sign up for a pastoral council. And that includes nominating yourself if you're interested in being part of it. So we're celebrating the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time with Father Sean, and we're remembering the St. Francis of Assisi parishioners and their intentions, and the members of the memorial enrollment. So let's stand and begin our prayer. continue our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Well, it's great to see everybody here in the South End on this uh, day that looks like it wants to be a nice day. Today in our Gospel, Jesus asks his disciple his disciples, and I think all of us gathered here today, a very important question. Who do we say Jesus Christ is for us? And although we might be able to provide a litany of different answers in good conscience, though our own lives really reflect what we believe and um, what we say of, in terms of how we understand Jesus Christ as the way and the truth and the light. And if we're honest, I guess we'll probably admit humbly that uh, more times than not, there's a little bit of a gap between what we say and what we do. We take a moment and we ask for God's mercy and God's forgiveness, and uh, we pray for an enlightenment, if you will, that we may grow in a better understanding of who we are as followers of Jesus Christ. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who goes after the lost sheep 
Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the light that helps the blind to see. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the word made flesh that helps the deaf to hear. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Gracious and ever-loving God, we ask that you look upon us as the creator of all things. May we feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may seek to always serve you with a sincere heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help, and who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith 
but does not have works. Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also, faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. And then he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and all of the scribes, and to be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this very openly. Then Peter took him aside and he began to rebuke him. At this, he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and he said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake And that of the gospel will save it. The gospel of the Lord. Well, if I seem a little bit more distracted than I usually am, um, I just got a text. And right as I looked, I had a bunch of them, and I wasn't going to respond to any of them. But this one was a little bit different. It was uh, from the bishop. Uh, and he had this attachment, and uh, he said, call me later, I want to talk to you. At first I thought it was kind of a joke, like from one of the friars, but I think it actually is really from the bishop, and he has something that he wants me to talk about. Who knows what that is? I don't know. (laughs) Anyway. um, Today, um, we are reminded, Jesus' uh, disciples, uh, again, they've been following him for a while, and uh, no doubt, they all have their own interpretations of who Jesus is and what he's all about. And so Jesus um, asked them a very important question. You know, he said, kind of like, what are people saying about me? Um, how do they identify who I am? And, and then kind of digs a little bit deeper. He's like, more importantly, who do you say that I am? And as we heard, the responses were all pretty different. 
You know, there's some people think that he's some sort of a prophet. Maybe he's Elijah. Maybe he's John the Baptist. But Peter seemed to get it right, at least at first glance. He said, well, you are the Messiah. You are the anointed one. You are the one that has come to save Israel victoriously in a way that is good, in a way that will renew us in terms of who we are as a people. And then, of course, Jesus throws in the fact that um, that may be true, but me being the Messiah is also, it's not going to be a nice little road down, nice little trip down uh, Yellow Brick Road, but there's going to be some suffering, there's going to be some challenging, there's going to be some hardships, and I'm eventually going to experience persecution and eventually will be put to death. And of course, this completely is complete opposite of how Peter understands what it means to be a Messiah. And uh, he rebukes them and they, he, Jesus gives it right back. And of course, he said, you know, you're not thinking this is my, my kingdom of my kingdom in this world is going to bring about, you know, probably a little bit uh, of unease. There's going to be a, a, a lack of popularity eventually for me in terms of what my kingdom is about. And of course, some of the disciples realized, I don't know that I'm, I, I'm into being able to follow Jesus and bring about this kingdom that he seeks to bring about and what it's all about. And of course, there are those that depart. Eventually, there are others that come back and realize that uh, following Jesus is probably going to be much more challenging than they had initially hoped or believed. With that thought right there, um, yesterday, of course, we uh, remembered and we celebrated and we recalled uh, 9-11. It was the anniversary, 20-year anniversary. And there was no way that you could really get away from um, calling attention to that. It was in all the papers, on the news. Uh, everything was calling attention to something regarding 9-11. And of course, a lot of the stories were stories that invited people to say, where were you 20 years ago? How do you remember that day? And for a lot of people, I think you would admit that 9-11 uh, was really like Kennedy's assassination, you can remember specifically where you were, what you were doing, what was happening. And uh, personally, myself, I was in a parish in New Jersey. Uh, I can remember the specifics of the day and as the news started to unfold. Um, but the part of the day that I remember the most was later in the afternoon. I was in my, in my room at the friary and suddenly there was a knock on the door and it was my brother Friars, three brother Friars out in front of the door. And they said, hey, Sean, um, Michael Judge just died. And Father Michael Judge, who was a Friar and a priest, but also a very good friend of mine, somebody who I had just, I had, just had dinner with him three weeks earlier. Uh, he preached at my first mass at St. Pius two years earlier when I was ordained. And I remember just being completely in shock. I was numb. Um, and we stood there in a little huddle and we hugged each other because it was just so, so um, unbelievable. Uh, and from there, uh, again, the world really began to change and everything changed. And of course, Michael, as the first casualty of 9-11, um, gained a new sort of popularity, if you will. And yesterday, there were all sorts of stories, what have you, and some of them were stories that called attention to that first casualty, Michael Judge. Michael was unbelievably charismatic. Uh, he was bigger than life. He had a personality that was in the room 20 minutes before he was. He had this Irish wit, and he was very handsome. All the women were kind of in awe of him. But he had a great way of just engaging with people, regardless of who you were or what you were, what you were doing. Um, of, of just kind of entering into your story. And it, 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 could, it was just as if that was the most important thing. And I really very much looked up to Michael because he was such a great, uh, a, a great priest and a, a great friar, but he just had a way about him that was just so authentic and real that you wanted to be a part of it. And I admired the manner in which he went about his own ministry. Again, he was the chaplain of the the fire department right across the street, but he also ministered to people in countless ways. And when I lived with him in New York City uh, at our big place on 31st Street, I would sometimes walk with him to his AA meetings. And, um, you know, on the way, he would probably run into 30 people that knew him. Hey, Father Michael, hey, Father Michael, regardless of who they were. 
Um, and he'd go into the meeting and I, I would usually go around the corner to the bar and I said, just come get me when you're done. I'll be here, have two drinks, whatever. I don't want to go to that meeting. But just the same, I didn't need to. That was okay. But I guess, again, the beauty of Michael was his way of ministering. He was able to really enter into the, the pain, the hardship, and the difficulty of whatever people were going through in a way that was very authentic and real and very much kind of like the gospel. He was willing to carry the cross other people were going through. And not just with like nice little words, but he really entered into it. And whether it was with his fellow people who were in recovery, whether it was um, with people who had AIDS, which again during the early 80s was a virus, uh, HIV virus that caused AIDS. And regretfully it was labeled as like the gay cancer. Um, unfortunately also the church was, you know, I think at that time, rather condemning of people who had AIDS. Um, but that did not influence Michael. That motivated him even more to reach out to them. And even though, in some instances, he, he could tell stories of when he walked into rooms and people say, I don't want anything to do with the church. He'd be like, that's okay. I'm just here to see how you're doing and to somehow convey the presence and the love of God, which he did. Or just the way in which he would deal with the firefighters and all the tragedies they had to embark upon. And I guess, again, what was so ironic and symbolic and I think probably something that was, um, I don't know, uh, just a very important truth, the manner in which he died was really very, very symbolic of the way that he lived. Um, he was willing, again, to enter into the pain, the suffering, the hardship of other people, so that they might have life, that life would be better for them. And so the fact that he died in the manner in which he did was, again, um, didn't surprise anybody, but it was very apropos because that's who Michael was. And I guess, again, more than anything for Michael, if you were to say, who was Jesus Christ for him? You knew full well who Jesus Christ was for him. That was very much at the root of who he was and why he did the things that he did and why he took the risks that he did. And so again, that was such an inspiring and inspirational example. Um, here we are though, 20 years later. 9-11 um, continues to live on within our own collective memory. Um, and yet we realize that time does not stop in any sort of way and neither do we. Um, yeah, we remember, we mourn, we uh, grieve the loss of all those people that have, who, who, who perished. Um, but we also hopefully remember a lot of the people who came forward, the people who are still alive and the people who passed away, people like Michael, um, who gave their own prophetic examples of bravery and grace. And it is my hope that those are the examples that inspire us, um, that are something that we can kind of maybe hold on to, that also invite us to kind of reflect on, you know, again, um, who do I say Jesus Christ is in the way that I live? How do I say who Jesus Christ is in the way that I am willing to undertake the burdens and the crosses and enter into the messy realities of life that sometimes most of us don't want to really enter into? Um, it is my hope and my prayer that uh, as we kind of critique who Jesus Christ is for us, that we might may be more open to the true spirit, to take the risk, to have the courage, to be inspired by the examples who have gone before us, um, to uh, enter into the messiness of life and to give a, a good testimony of, of who we say Jesus Christ is in the way in which we're able to enter into the, the ugly and the unknown, and that it will not only um, serve as an inspiration to other people, but it will also testify, just like St. James said in the letters, that um, our life of faith is uh, expressed not just in the words that we say, but in the things that we do. May God's peace and all that is good be with you. Together we stand, and in one voice we profess our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. As we strive to take up our own crosses in our pursuit of following Jesus, we know that we cannot do it alone, and so we bring our own prayers to God, who gives us strength and courage. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis and other church leaders speak out for the oppressed throughout the world and reap a bountiful harvest of justice on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all world leaders work as a unified body to agree to pass legislation that will benefit all peoples of our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the parish of St. Francis of Assisi remember all those touched by the tragic events of September 11, 2001, and may the world and may the people of all nations feel a renewed urgency to work for world peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all suffering from the burdensome crosses of chronic physical or mental illness will find strength and support in their doctors and physical therapists. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit be with all the students who are embarking in this new school year. May they be open to listening to God's wisdom through their love of learning. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish remembers to continue to aid and support our local food pantries so that they can help the disadvantaged people of our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the deceased may feel God's hand leading them as they slip from this world into his heavenly paradise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now mention by first name all those we wish to remember in prayer. and all those who remain in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask that you continue to pour forth your spirit upon all of us gathered here. Dispel the darkness of our hearts and of our world. Grant that we may always have a correct faith and a certain hope and a perfect charity so that we can carry out your holy and true command. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
pray, my friends, that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable to our good and loving God. Good and gracious God, on this holy day, we ask that you accept the special gifts that we bring to your table, the gifts of bread and wine and the gifts of our lives. May they always be acceptable and pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks and praise, almighty and ever-loving God, for the countless ways in which you seek to reveal yourself to the world and through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, you are always inviting us to change our hearts, to know reconciliation and healing. Even more, your spirit is at work when human hearts are able to change and enemies begin to speak to one another. Adversaries join hands in friendship and people seek the way of peace together. By the working of your spirit, it comes about, O oh Lord, when hatred is overcome by love, when revenge gives way to forgiveness and discord is changed to mutual respect. And so we give you endless thanks. We now join our voices with all the choirs of heaven we cry out to your majesty here on earth, and in one voice we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending forth your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured forth for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. And as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward and Howard, our bishops, and all your holy people your son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that together with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints 
on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in union with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. together in one voice and one heart we join our voices and together we pray the prayer Jesus taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be reached in
gracious and loving God, we pray that this heavenly gift may take possession of our minds and bodies, that its effects may be seen in how we live and proclaim that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, any uh, special announcements? Any birthdays or anniversaries in the crowd for anybody here that uh, wants to... Ah, oh, welcome. Wow. And I just celebrated my 60th birthday. I think there's something we could probably work out within the context of the parish to, I don't know, just make that, make that celebration a little bit more elaborate and festive and inclusive and all are, all are welcome. Anybody have anything else? All right, well, I'll keep Dorothy posted, and I'll probably try to spread the word in terms of what the bishop wants. Ooh, I'm a little nervous, um, but not to worry. I um, wish I had some news flashes, but I don't. Everybody, we have to take each day as, as it comes, of course, with the New York Heroes Act that just came out this week. Uh, again, kind of like we're stepping back a little bit, same at Siena. Um, kind of certain restrictions are now more in place in terms of mask wearing, social distancing, that kind of stuff. Um, same at the center, and so life continues, but we pray for relief and change and uh, resurrection. And of course, it's always good to see Sister Natalie back here. Even though I sent you the envelopes, I was fearful that we'd never see you again. But it's good that you're here. Okay, my friends, the Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, our celebration has ended, but our lives continue. Let us go in peace to love God and to serve each other. Have a great rest of the day, a great weekend, a great week ahead, and stay safe, and thanks for coming. Thank you.